So it looks like AMD may be potentially pulling the plug on their RDNA 1 RX 5000 series and RDNA 2 RX 6000 series GPUs. GPUs that a lot of PC gamers own and still use to this day. And this really isn't a great look. So let's discuss all of that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel, and I hope you've all been doing well. So today in this video, we're going to be talking about the recent news that came out surrounding AMD and their Radeon group, how they may be pulling the plug on support for their RDNA 1 RX 5000 series and RDNA 2 RX 6000 series GPUs. And this video wasn't really planned or anything. It's pretty much unscripted. So, you know, forgive me if I'm going to be kind of bouncing all over the place here. But I did want to talk about this situation and give my thoughts on it. And it looks like AMD actually put out an update statement, which they gave to Tom's hardware, which makes it seem like they're walking back their initial statement, or it might be clarification from their PR team. Regardless, if it is just clarification, then their PR team really needs to do a better job because the statement that they initially pulled out was actually causing a lot of fiasco within the community, and it really pissed off a lot of their customers and consumers. Um, but essentially what happened is AMD put out a statement saying that the RX 6000 and 5000 series GPUs are going to be going into maintenance mode, whatever that means, and that they will no longer be receiving any game optimizations. And then after that, AMD clarified saying that the maintenance mode for RX 6000 and 5000 series GPUs doesn't mean that it's a lack of game optimizations. I'll have links to the relevant hardware in the video description so you guys can read further on it. But when you think about this whole situation, it really doesn't seem like a good look and it doesn't instill a lot of confidence in their consumer base. Because if you look at their competitor like NVIDIA, NVIDIA is, is, is still providing really good support for their RTX 20 series graphics cards. And these graphics cards were released in the summer of 2018. So they're nearing like seven, eight years old at this point. And I actually did do a revisit of the RTX 2080 earlier this year where I benchmarked it in various new games that came out this year and last year to see how it would perform with, you know, medium settings or high settings. And it actually did do a pretty good job. And last year when NVIDIA actually rolled out DLSS 4 uh, with their RTX 50 series graphics cards. No, actually, that wasn't even last year. That was earlier this year sometime in like early February or something like that. Um, they introduced DLSS 4, which is a newer transformer upscaling model, which works a lot better than their CNN model. And they actually made that compatible with the RTX 20 series and the 30 series GPUs pretty much day one. So I tested that on the RTX 2080 and found that it worked quite well. And so when you see this kind of support from NVIDIA and then you see what AMD is doing with their RDNA 2 and RDNA 1 graphics card, it really doesn't instill a lot of confidence with customers. And this is a like detriment to the reputation. It's not going to allow them to really capture or grow any market share at all. And honestly, from a personal level, this is why I'm typically always recommending NVIDIA graphics cards to people who I know that aren't in aren't really tech savvy and just want a game. Because at the end of the day, I know that recommending NVIDIA is just going to work for them. Whereas with AMD, you don't know if they're going to end up dropping support uh, for a neat, fairly recent graphics card. Um, you know, in a couple of years or so. And to be clear, this isn't like a complete drop. Like I said, AMD is putting them in maintenance mode. So the series will still get like crucial security updates or major, major bug fixes. But there's not going to be any sort of day one game ready drivers. I, and even if they say that they will be trying to commit to that, I just don't think they will because they did put out a similar statement with the RX Vega and Polaris series. But I was taking a look at their driver history for those cards. And the frequency to which RDNA 3 and RDNA 2 were getting updates wasn't the same as what RX Vega and RX, uh, the Polaris series were getting. And to be fair, I'm not saying that they need to be fully committed uh, to those series, even if they're reaching, you know, the 8, 10 year old mark or something like that. At that point, yeah, sure, they're pretty ancient graphics cards. And one could argue maybe a five year old GPU is also considered ancient in the tech world, right? But the RX 6000 series, like these came out in late 2020 and there were some that came out in 2021. And these are still very, very capable graphics cards. Like the RDNA 1 series RX 5000, I can understand because they don't even support the X12 Ultimate. So there's some missing features there. But for the RDNA 2 series, which actually came out to be very competitive 
and the initial feedback and response for that series was actually very good. Um, it's just a shame because I still see some retailers actually actually actively selling some RDNA two cards like the RX sixty six hundred and sixty six hundred XT. Um, so the fact that AMD is not going to be providing um, as much support for those graphics cards as they will for RDNA three and RDNA four. Um, it's, it just sucks because now those customers, they may be running into issues with new games that may come out like major releases that may give them problems. Um, performance may not be as optimal. And sometimes, you know, with newer games, you run into issues where the game detects or wants a specific driver or something recent. And if you don't have that driver installed, it actually pops up a message saying that you need to install this driver. Otherwise, the game just simply won't launch. I've run into that with NVIDIA cards and also AMD as well. So that can actually pretty much prevent people from playing a lot of the new games if they're using one of these RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 graphics cards. Along with that, it would be terrible if for some reason, just because of a driver version, you can't actually launch that game, even though the GPU is fully capable of playing it. And I mean, speaking of GPU capabilities, when you look at the RDNA 2 RX 6000 series, like the RX 6800, 6750, 6900 XT. These are really capable graphics cards still to this day. I mean, uh, a few months ago, I did a revisit of the RTX 3080 and found that it still performed quite well in terms of 1080p and 1440p performance. And when you go back um, and take a look at RX 6800 XT benchmarks, it pretty much worked on par with the RTX 3080. In fact, it had that advantage of having 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And that was what made RDNA 2 pretty appealing compared to some of the NVIDIA offerings at that time, right? You look at the RX 6800 versus the RTX 3070, and today you'll find that the RTX 3070 is performing quite worse in a lot of games because it has just 8 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the RTX or RX 6800 is working quite well because it has that 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and it can perform really well in a lot of modern games, whether it be, you know, Battlefield 6 or something recent like Outer Worlds or... You know, obviously, you got to adjust settings and all of that, but there's still a lot of new games that have come out in this year. And these cards are still totally capable and fine for running them without any issues. Granted, you just make an adjustment for your settings. So, it, yeah, I mean, it just sucks that AMD is now going to be putting them in maintenance drivers mode and they're not going to be getting as frequent of updates as their NVIDIA counterparts. Like when it comes to NVIDIA, one of the things I like is whenever there's a new major release, like recently we had Battlefield and then, you know, recently we also had Outer Worlds. These are major release titles and uh, NVIDIA would release game ready drivers either a couple days before, either the day of the release, or if not, if it's not timed properly and they don't release it the same day, at least a few days later, you would start to see the game ready driver come out. Um, but they're usually pretty on point, whereas with AMD, the frequency of their drivers is a lot less. And that's one of the reasons why NVIDIA has such a huge market share is not just because of, you know, maybe superior gaming performance or superior performance array tracing and um, all of the other features like NVIDIA broadcast, but also support really, really matters. And NVIDIA support when it comes to, you know, on a, obviously on a Windows environment, that's it's on point and it's un, it's unmatched when it comes to their competitors. And when we're talking about features, FSR 4 still doesn't work like officially with RDNA 3 graphics cards. Like these aren't even graphics cards that are five years old. This is a graphics card that came out in late 2022. And FSR 4, like you can get it working, but apparently you have to use like mods. And that was a mod that was created from a leak. So it wasn't even actually intentional by AMD. And I think it can work with some RDNA cards too. But there's no official support for it. Whereas like I was saying with um, NVIDIA, like DLSS 4 had an official release. Like you can enable DLSS 4 from the driver and you can choose the uh, DLLL or override in the NVIDIA uh, app that now is available for um, their consumers. But when you look, take a look at that, where NVIDIA is still supporting GPUs longer, they're able to like backport features like that day one. Whereas AMD is pretty much giving vague statements about, yeah, FSR 4 is coming, and then they finally release it for the intended series months after the series actually launched. Because remember, FSR 4 wasn't available for the RX 9070 XT and 9070 when those GPUs hit the market. It wasn't until several months later when games started actually implementing those features and having support for them, let alone, you know, RX 7900 XTXs, which were like $1,000 GPUs when they came out, right? Uh, whereas NVIDIA will have that support day one. So when you 
look at that and you take a look at proper support for features and driver support, NVIDIA has actually done a much better job than AMD in terms of actually treating their customers better. And that really goes a long way. And it's one of the reasons why like AMD is just struggling to really grow their market share because like I said, it doesn't just come down to performance. It also comes down to the feature stack and also the level of support that you're giving to your consumers. Furthermore, this could have some serious ramifications on their integrated GPUs as well. Like what does this mean for a lot of those mini PCs or handhelds that are using graphics or APUs that have RDNA 2 uh, chips that are based on that architecture, right? Like what about support for those chips? You know, people were dogging on Intel and their graphics division, but I have an MSI Claw and the driver level support that Intel has been putting out for their Arc series, their integrated Arc series on the MSI Claw has actually been really good. There's been really a lot of frequent driver updates especially when new games have been coming out. It's kind of been on the level of what NVIDIA offers with their driver support. So, you know, what's AMD going to do with those integrated uh, graphics? And when you think about priorities, right, you look at AMD and they're obviously on that AI uh, enterprise hype train. They're focused on um, mobile chips and they're focused on consoles. Um, but what it, clearly discrete GPUs are not on the top of their priority list, right? Um, so. Who knows what support's going to look like for that in the future when future generation GPUs are going to come out too. Like buying a GPU that's only like two, three years old after that, and then you find that the support starts getting so lackluster, and then you see your competitor's product and they're still getting day one updates. Yeah, it's not a good feeling, guys. And then when you take a look at like reactions from the community, don't just take this from me, but go on the AMD subreddit, go on like the hardware subreddit, and you can just see the reactions from people who own like AMD graphics cards. These guys are pissed. And there's been, you know, a lot of people who are saying stuff like that this would probably be their last AMD graphics card. They're going to be switching to Nvidia as much as they don't want to. Um and they won't they themselves won't be able to recommend AMD products to other people in the future as well. So, yeah, I mean, this is just going to cause the snowball effect and this is just typical AMD behavior. They're always doing these things, you know, the saying where they don't miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. They're always fumbling the ball and um, Radeon just can't seem to get it together. And then circling back to their updated statement, this is more of a, you know, you'll believe it when you'll see it type of situation, right? Like, I mean, AMD could say that, yeah, we're going to be committed to driver updates, but then when the next big release launches, I'm going to take a look to see if they're going to be providing updated drivers for their RX 6000 and RX 5000 series. And then if they don't, like how long will it be until those series do get driver updates, right? Um, so we're going to have to wait and see and see how that turns out. But that's pretty much all I wanted to say in terms of this whole situation. It's really not a good look. And I am really hoping that uh, AMD and their driver team come together and really do some self-reflection upon their team, right? And say that, yeah, if we want to instill confidence with our customers. We need to make sure that our support is on parity with our competitor because this is really not a good look. And you I mean you can argue that AMD is so much smaller and the um NVIDIA driver team is bigger than all of Radeon combined, but I mean that isn't the consumer's problem. At the end of the day it's not. Really the consumer is not going to look at that and say, I want to support the underdog despite, you know, not having support for this product potentially three or four years down the road, whereas their competitor is going to be supporting a product for like eight plus years. So yeah, like it, it's not going to work out well for them. But that's going to do it for this one. And we'll touch base in the next video. Take care. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.